fortunate we return our, our deep snapper, our kicker, our punter, and our holder. Uh, so as a coach, you don't have to hold your breath as much, and you can kind of breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief that we know we ought to get at least what we got last year. You know, now hopefully we can improve on those numbers. And when you look at a guy like Brock House Khan and how well he punted early in the season, hopefully he can continue to develop. And he's probably got the most competition right now with a young man named Chris Verone, who redshirted a year ago, that I think is going to provide some great competition at that position right now for us. And Chris will also uh, compete in the kickoff duties as well. So there'll be a little bit of competition going on with the specialist as well. On the offensive side of the ball, probably where, excuse me, <clears throat> where we were hit the hardest with graduation would be on the offensive line, losing both of our tackles and our center. Uh, you hate to replace offense alignment, but I think there's some great candidates there. Obviously, a guy like Mark Popek is an upperclassman that played a little bit for us a year ago. Uh, Damon Edwards is going to be a junior next year. He's a guy that's really starting to change his body and doing some good things, and a guy you're going to hear his name an awful lot. And then Quintarius Eatman, Q Eatman, um, is a, was a redshirt freshman. He came in at about 260 pounds, or 360 pounds, sorry. Uh, came in at 360 pounds. He's down to about 305 pounds. Looks great changing his body around, getting some arms on him, redistributing his weight a little bit. Uh, but he, he really, those three are going to have a heck of a competition going on at the tackle position right now. Inside, there's a lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of names, but we don't have a lot of depth there right now. And I say names, obviously, you have guys like uh, Jeremiah Warren and Chaz Hine. But then McCaskill, who went in and did a great job for us in the Miami game when Samson got hurt. You got guys like Dana Sestinor that's there. You've got uh, Poe. You've got Ryder. Uh, you've got John McGinn. You've got Anthony Kibler. Uh, I'm sure I'm leaving somebody out of this mix. But I mean, you've got a lot of names there right now. And that's probably one of the big areas as coaches we're looking forward to seeing how that's going to play out. The depth chart is not formulated with the staff sitting there in the staff room saying, okay, let's put him there and him there and him there. Let's, let's kind of put it out. Let's let him compete. Damon Edwards may need to go into guard. Jeremiah Warren may need to go out to tackle. We're going to get an opportunity to kind of find the best mix on that offensive line. But I think we've got a great nucleus to work with as we get into spring practice. The quarterback situation, obviously, uh, B.J. Daniels is back. Uh, with their strong performance he had in the bowl game. And I'm really anxious to watch the growth and the development of Bobby Evel. Just as a freshman a year ago, uh, I think he was just learning kind of what everybody did, where he's really, I think he's starting to get a better understanding and going to get more and more comfortable at the quarterback position. Also excited to see what Jemias Gunsby can do. We know athletically what he can do. He's big, he's strong, he's about 235 pounds right now. He looks great. Really anxious to see what he's going to do on the field along with the another new addition, our third new addition, and Matt Floyd to see what he's going to do in the quarterback position. I know he's going to be uh, swimming through, swimming a little bit mentally right now uh, as much as we've been throwing at him here in the first couple days, but anxious to see how he evolves and develops into that role a little bit. At the tight end position, you've got guys like Isaac Virgin, uh, who this spring is really going to be important to. We're going to make the move with Armando Sanchez and put him over there uh, at the fullback position. He's been a linebacker special teams player for us with Kelly leaving. And then you take guys like a Chase Griffith. Griffith, we're anxious to see what he can do. We're probably going to take a look at a young man named Chris Bright, who was a linebacker from Plant High School, who was a walk-on a year ago, uh, played kind of just a limited role for us on special teams, and possibly give him a look over there at the fullback position as well. And that one's wide open and a lot of competition going on at the fullback position. At the running back, uh, again, that may be the most competitive position going on right now. You've got Demetrius Murray is back uh, and doing well, but I'm really anxious to see what Daryl Scott and Deontay Acock are going to be able to do uh, once they get into the system. I know they've been impressive when you hold a card up. You know, and they get to look at the card and go, okay, I run toss sweep right. And then watching them with what they're doing, cutting against the grain and uh, some of the things that they're doing athletically, I think is going to create a lot of excitement in the backfield. Uh, again, along with a guy named Marcus Shaw, who was a young guy that we saw a little bit early. Uh, didn't really play as much as I'm sure he wanted to as the year went on. And somebody that we're really looking for growth and development out of his position. 
Again, at the wide receiver position, a lot of names, probably a lot like the guard center spot. A lot of names, but probably not a lot of identity right now like we have at the linebacker position. You've got a lot of names with a lot of guys that have played. A.J. Love is full speed. He's good to go. Uh, he'll be cleared for full practice beginning today. Sterling Griffin is doing great. He is cleared for practice. It's great to see those guys back see them going through the grass drills with everything. It's nice to have both of them back at receiver, but you have a lot of guys a year ago they got a lot of experience as well. When you look at uh, all of a sudden, the Nevin Landy went out there and gave us some great minutes and had some played a great role for us. You look at a guy like Joel Miller and what he did for us. Obviously, y'all talk a little bit about Lindsey Lamar, but uh, you look at a guy like Derek Hopkins, Victor Mark, TJ Knowles, um, Terrence Mitchell, Stephen Bravo Brown, Farron Horns. I, I know there's just a lot of names right there, and right now I really don't know how they're all going to play out. We don't know they're going to have to learn inside and outside. We're going to turn and roll them out. We're going to turn and it's going to be an experiment at wide receiver, but I'm anxious to see how the wide receiver is really going to start to take shape and how that's going to start to play out. Uh, when you do look at it, I believe there's seven guys that will not be going through spring practice right now because of injuries that will be limited in some way, shape, or form. Um, obviously, uh, Jake Kaufman is still on the injured reserve with his back. He will not be participating in spring at all. You've got Jeff Hawkins and Bradley Battles who both had ACLs at the end of the season. They're both progressing along very nicely, doing a nice job, able to jog and start running a little bit, but they're coming along well with that. Um, You've got Shields as a tight end, has had a back issue. He's been a li limited a little bit. He will probably be limited a little bit and probably won't be full go until after spring break, which will be about practice number six. So he's going to be limited a little bit from an injury standpoint. I believe that's, and then Lindsey Lamar, who had shoulder surgery at the end of the season. He played with it during the course of the year. It was something we knew that he was going to have to have done at the end of the season. He had that shoulder surgery done uh, in January, and he is recuperating very nicely. I know he's kind of chomping at the bit to get back in there and start running track a little bit and start getting back in the weight room and putting some of the weight back on for his development as a football player. But we'll, we'll be without those five as we go through the first five practices of spring ball. And then we've got two on defense. Ricardo Dixon's kind of in shield, same situation. He's got a back issue that we're kind of uh, cautiously moving forward with. Uh, you want to be careful anytime you're dealing with the back, and we're going to err on the side of being uh, more restrictive than we are turning and letting him go. So he's going to be held <coughs> the first five, and we'll reevaluate him from him. And Jarrell Young has got a stress fracture in his leg, which he should be fine. Uh, but again, we're going to proceed slowly with him so that doesn't turn into something more serious and we can let him get fully healed. So I believe those seven are going to be the only seven uh, right now as we go forward that are going to be restricted at all.